Hello everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on William Cullen Bryant, Cullen Bryant uh, and his poetry. So William Cullen Bryant lived 1794 to 1878. Uh, so again, he's another author in which lives a a substantially long life, 84 years. Um, and he actually published his first poem at a very early age. He published at 14, uh, which by any standards is, is pretty impressive. Uh, and he, over the span of his life, he gained international acclaim for his various work. And in particular, one of the things that Brian is well known for is, he's known for his writing, his poetry, but he's also known for his experience as an editor, and the ways in which he shaped and influenced the various publications that he was editor for. And that's something worth noting, is that much of American literature focuses on the readings on the writings of authors, but there isn't much discussion about the role of editors, uh, the role of publishing industry as a whole, and how that impacted various people, their success, or how their messages were sometimes even changed by editors. So one of his most famous poems that we're going to take a look at uh, in this mini lecture, but we'll be reading others in the reading packet for Bryant, is Thanatopsis, and it was published in the North American Review in 1817. So Thanatopsis is best translated as, or at least Bryant translated as, Meditation on Death. Uh, the Thana is, of course, the, the death part. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Marvel Comics, Thanos is, of course, this character that's constantly seeking death. And Topsis, that word is, it, both of these words are Greek-derived. Um, Topsis deals with sight. So this is death sight, or, or looking at death, or meditation on death. I'm just going to look at this excerpt and be thinking about it as you're reading the poem in its entirety and a lot of other uh, of Bryant's writings which are focused on the natural world or, or connecting to the natural world and death is certainly a piece of that. Make thee to shudder and grow sick at heart. Go forth under the open sky. Enlist to nature's teachings. While from all around, earth and her waters and the depths of air, comes a still voice. Right, so make these shut our, this first passage, you know, come a still voice. In many ways, death is understood as that still voice, right? It is a silencing. It is a end. And, you know, to nature's teaching, while from all around, earth and her waters and depths of air, comes a still voice. That is, nature teaches us that all of these things eventually end. They cease. Yet a few days in the... The all-beholding sun shall, shall see no more in all his course, nor yet in the cold ground, where thy pale form was laid with many tears, nor in the embrace of the ocean shall exist thy image. Earth that nourished thee shall claim thy growth to be resolved to earth again, and lost each human trace surrender, surrendering up thine individual being shalt thou go to mix forever with the elements. To be a brother to the insensible rock, and to the sluggish clod, which the rude swain turns with his snare, with his share, and treads upon, the oak shall end his roots abroad, and pierce thy mold. Pierce thy mold. So, you know, as you can see here, very poetically, Brian is talking about death and what happens afterwards. Right, the all be beholding sun shall see no more, in all his course nor yet in the cold ground where the, your pale form was laid with many tears. Right? Think that that's a very beautiful image there, that you know, pale form, that is your your dead body is laid with many tears. Um there's there's a visual there, right? That the putting of the laying down of the body with tears. That is the people around um you crying for your death. Nor in the embrace of the ocean shall exist thy image, right? So you will never get to see the reflection, right? Nor in the embrace of the ocean shall exist thy image. You won't get to see your reflection in the ocean or in any water, as it were. Earth that nourished thee shall claim thy growth, right? So 
Earth helped you grow, and now Earth is going to lay claim to that growth, to be resolved to Earth again, to bring you back into the Earth. In lost each human trace, surrender, surrendering upon thy individual being, shalt thou go to mix forever with the elements. So all, all that was you is now re return to those elements. You know, if you ever watched The Lion King, uh, the, the, the famous song, Akuna Matata, The Circle of Life, that's a really what Brian is talking about here. That's really what he's tapping into in that, you know, there there's a sadness about this, but there's this amazing power, this amazing sense of immortality embedded in death, which again seems contradictive, but sits really well as you start to think about the cycles of nature. All right, that's just a brief introduction to Bryant. I hope it gives you a little bit of flavor, a little bit of things to work with, uh, and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.